Steve, look, I just picked up this brand new Instant Read thermometer. It's a beauty. Uh, it's got uh, Celsius, Fahrenheit, maximum, minimum reads, and uh, it's got, all, well, all kinds of stuff. Look what you've done! I know, I Gee. almost got soup on my brand new Instant Read thermometer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Well, Steve, all jokes aside, we really do have to be careful when we're adding salt to dishes these days, correct? Absolutely, Carl. A lot of it can come from your doctor recommending to take a lower sodium intake. Uh, or uh, even if you're just reading the, the labels in the stores, everybody seems to be looking for that, that salt content in there. And uh, one of the most important things is when you're making a recipe, um, you can add salt, but you can't take it away. It's just one of those things that once it's in there, you just can't blend it with any other flavors or anything like that. It's just going to stay. Yeah. And of course, if you're adding processed food to a recipe, mm -hmm. be careful of that because that contains a lot of sodium as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Okay, coming up in the program today, we have as our guest Legal Eagle Bob Simmons, former chair of the Mon Board of Regents, and this past spring he was honored with a doctorate degree from Memorial University. What are we going to be making with Bob? We're going to be making a lobster pot pie. Ooh, that Ooh, sounds delicious. Yes. And Ruth Wigman is here from Bistro Sophia. She's going to show us how to make a really neat appetizer called lamb lollipops. Lollipops? <laughs> uh, stick around. For a complete listing of One Chef, One Critic recipes, wine lists, and more, check out our website. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. And we are now joined by Bob Simmons, and it's great to have you on the show, Bob. Thanks for being invited. Uh, I hope you've got an appetite. Uh, uh, yes, I do. And that's one thing I do have lots of. <laughs> that's good, because you need one on this show. Steve, tell us about this dish. What we're going to be making, Bob, is a beautiful lobster pot pie. So uh, I guess we better get started. So what we're going to do, we're going to saute off some celery okay. and some onions. I'll pop that in there and you can start to give the old I stir. I understand I'm licensed to do this. You're licensed yes, to stir, okay. okay? A few more onions in there and away we go. And you want me to grill this corn? If you could, Carl, please. Yeah, I think okay. there's nothing better than having corn with our, uh, with our lobster. Mm. That's for sure. I'll try my best. Yeah. So well, I've, got, I've got a little bit of butter in there as well and we'll, we will make a roux with this. Okay. So. Bob, well, congratulations are in order. Last spring you received an honorary doctorate degree from I did, I did indeed. E efforts uh, as uh, chair of the Board of Regents. That's it. Uh, uh, it's a great honor. I, I was surprised, <laughs> impressed, and I had great company. General Hiller, uh, Susan Patton, I mean, you know, just, just a yeah. tremendous honor and uh, Truly unexpected. Truly so, unexpected. So should we be calling you Dr. Simmons now? Well, in certain, in certain forms I like to use my title. Yeah, yeah. It does get you in various places. As long as it's not to, uh, you know, provide assistance in the case of cardiac arrest. No, 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 no. no. But I maintain to my partners that I'm purely smarter than all of them because I only have masters. <laughs> Yeah. So Bob, do you cook at all at home? Or? A little, but as I was saying to Carl earlier, my wife is a, is a phenomenal cook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the only problem is she's shrinking all my clothes for some <laughs> reason. But no, no, she's, uh, I, I, I like the barbecue and that, but she's, uh, yeah, yeah, she's, yeah. The main, oh. she's the main chef in the family and does a great job. Perfect, perfect. So to that then, we'll just add a little bit of flour, mm -hmm. make a bit of a roux. Bob, you were chair of the Board of Regents at an exciting time. You were, it was, it you're, was. Uh, under your leadership, you were picking a new president, weren't you? We were. You? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I have to say uh, a special thanks to our former Premier Williams for giving me the trust to take the position. Uh, at the time, there was some issues and controversy going on at the university, but with the help of a tremendous Board of Regents, and I can't overstate that enough, yes, the people yeah. on the Board of Regents, mm -hmm. the volunteers who gave back, uh, we had a phenomenal search service in Janet Wright and Associates out of Toronto who led us to pick... Uh, President Kachinowski, yeah. and I think you got the right. Person. I think we got the right person. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So no, it was a very exciting time. It mm. was took a lot of time, but as I say, the the contributions of of uh, the board of regents and my advisors, t mm. uh, Tina, who was my assistant, and right. Glenn Collins, who was registrar at the time, just a tremendous effort, mm. and it's paid off. Yeah, I think it's paid off. Handsomely. Sure. Yeah. Now you're uh, a criminal lawyer representing uh, the innocent. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
criminal lawyer, and uh, you're also involved in disciplinary uh, proceedings. That's kind of, that kind of thing. This is this is stressful stuff. Uh, do, how do you how do you unwind from that? Do you? Well, you have ways of dealing I with do. Uh, I used to play hockey up until this year, but the yeah. uh, problem being I can't skate, shoot, or pass the puck. <laughs> I, I saw my possibilities there as limited in the future. But I have a big shed up yeah. in uh, up in my place up in the country, up in Clarks Beach. Yeah. And I have a 1968 Mustang Fastback. Ah. Uh, so that's a toy. Uh, it is a toy. It's named yeah. the same as my wife, Dana. I yeah. have the name painted okay. on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm hoping to... Uh, in the very near future, uh, next spring, she should be all done and ready mm -hmm. to rock and roll. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, excellent. We'll also add some, now we've got a nice sauce going there, we'll add some potatoes. Now, these potatoes have already been cooked and blanched. Okay. Get them all out. There Perfect. We go. So that's, uh, you know, the, yeah. in the shed and yeah. puttering around yeah. with a rum and coke and uh, working you, on the you, car. Uh, you, I believe, at one time were a Crown Prosecutor. I was. And so you've, you've, had, you've seen things from that side. Um, I suppose, essentially, when you're preparing a case, both sides have to do similar work, right? Well, absolutely. And yeah. I was perhaps, in my vintage as a Crown Prosecutor, were, we had a little less public uh, surveillance or public review. Mm. Today, the Crown Prosecutors, I want to understand, and, and, and that's not a bad thing, mm. but it certainly adds an issue that they have to, it's not just you know, making sure they get the guilty person, but they have to make sure they've done it right, treated the witnesses fairly, listened to the yeah. complainants. I mean, you can yeah. imagine the grief that, that some yeah. complainants who've had yeah. their homes broken into or someone injured, mm. how, how just mm. dramatic that is to them. So it's, it's, it's a difficult job sure, for the Crown, yeah. and they've got, yeah. their job is not to win, their job yeah. is to make sure they fairly present it. And, yeah. and to their credit, uh, they're doing that, and, and uh, I, I think it's been, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly been a rewarding experience for me being a crown for three years and then going into private oh, practice. Oh, yeah. So, Steve, well, let's just recap. Mm -hmm. What do okay. we have in here uh, now? Okay. We've switched off on our celery and our onions. We made a roux with a little bit of butter in there. We've added some flour, thickened it. Then we've added some uh, cooked potatoes. Now we've put in some mixed vegetables of carrots and peas for some color. And I'm going to put in there, this is a seafood seasoning. Now we'll add, mm -hmm. add our cooked lobster there. I've got some lobster meat and our lobster. This smells delicious. Close, yes. oh, no, that into looks absolutely decadent, doesn't it? It does indeed. <laughs> the color's really going to come yeah. out. No, no, no calories in this. No, 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 no. All the calories removed. Yeah. yeah. Should we turn the heat yeah. back on that a bit? Yes, you can turn it up as high as you can get it. There. Oh, oh, high. Oh, yeah, higher. higher. Okay. No, you're not there. concerned that I'm going to burn this? No, 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 no. We're going to be yeah. fine with that, actually. And all we want to do is just bring it to the boil because then we're going to be putting it into our beautiful crocs so and then we're going to cover okay. that with pastry. Oh, wow. You see, so. And we're going to be okay for seasoning because we put that seafood seasoning in. Bob, when you were a little fella, did, you know, were you one of those kids who watched Perry Mason and said, I want to be, I want to be him. I want to well, I, I, I think there was a little bit of that, but uh, it's, it's when I, certainly when I went through my commerce degree here, yeah. Uh, I had at that time decided if I can get into law school. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I was yeah. fortunate enough to get into Dalhousie and a couple of others, but I went to yeah. Dalhousie. Working with the Crown was a good experience. I actually sure. went with an insurance company for a brief period of time with Johnson yeah. Insurance as their executive director. And then uh, a firm invited me to come into private practice. So oh, okay. Yeah. It, it's, been, uh, yeah. it's been a really good experience. And we've had the, myself and, and the other lawyers at my firm had the good fortune to be involved in the rectifying of a couple of wrongful conviction cases. Right. Yeah. And that is a tremendously rewarding. Yes, of course. Book. Yeah, yeah. Tremendously rewarding. Well, as speaking of that, uh, I, I read that uh, between uh, 2008, mm -hmm. okay. every year, in fact, since 2008 and, and 2013, you've received the designation as best criminal lawyer in Canada. <laughs> That's pretty heady stuff. It's a compliment. It certainly is a compliment, but it's, it's I have to say, a, a great thank you to my peers because yeah. it's done through a peer review, yes. yeah. uh, and I've been fortunate to get it the last six or seven years. Which so. makes it even more meaningful, I guess. Oh, really? It, yeah. it, the, the best advertising you can ever have yeah. is your peers' advertising. That's right. If yeah. someone calls and says, look, a friend of mine's yeah. in trouble, yeah. uh, I don't do this kind, will you do it? Yeah. That is the very best That's right. that yeah. you can get. So I've been, I've been yeah. very fortunate, that, and I've been very fortunate to have mm -hmm. tremendous partners. Yeah. Perfect. Tremendous partners. And when you think of, you know, the... the better criminal lawyers, what, what qualities do they have? What, what is it about them that separates them from the lawyers well, who I maybe aren't as effective? I, I don't know that it's just, this just applies to criminal lawyers. Uh, I think it applies to any hmm. legal practitioner. One is a, 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 a desire for the truth, hmm. the facts. Another is, is an eye to detail. Hmm. Uh, and as when I was going through university, the present chief justice, our court appeal, 
Derek Green said to me, he said, Bob, let me tell you, and he was a very, very young instructor at the university and just back from law school himself. He said, it's not always the smartest lawyer that wins. It's usually the best prepared. There you go. And I believe him to yeah. be correct on yeah. that. And the final thing, and I try and make this my motto, is that uh, your word is your bond. That's right. And it doesn't matter how smart you are, if your word is not worth anything, then That's you're not right. worth anything. <laughs> You know. Steve, uh, you uh, brush, brush the rim with I'll some egg. With an egg, then I just put our pastry on okay. the top, and then we'll just bake it in the oven. Okay, and I'm going to check out the wine cellar now, guys. And Perfect. See if we can get a good. Yes. Sir. Okay. And Bob, if you just want to stand to the side right. there. I the wonders of TV. Okay. We have, we have uh, one already. Three already. Oh my! So <laughs> supper's going to be on the table ASAP. There we go. God, they smell delicious. Wow! There you go. You see. They smell Perfect. delicious. We'll just turn that lid up there and away we go. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Well, we've got a luxurious dish today. It's lobster pot pie Yum. with uh, beautiful pastry on top. I think it's your recipe, actually. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we've got to have a wine, and uh, I guess white is the way to go. It is. Chardonnay is classic with lobster because of, you've got so much richness and butterness. You've got the pastry and the milk and all the dairy and everything going on in here. To have something that isn't too, too, you want something medium to full-bodied, but you want some nice bright acidity. I have three wines wines here, three Chardonnays from different parts of the world. Um, the middle one has a little bit of oak and the other one, the other two I should say, have no oak at all. So the middle one is from the Languedoc region of France, so quite far south. It's an up-and-coming wine region. They don't have a lot of regulations there because it's sort of a newer area just starting to be recognized. So you'll notice it's, it's unusual for a French wine to have the, one, the grape varietal right on the label, but they do here, so Chardonnay is written right there. This one is seen a couple of months in oak. It's the Robert Scully uh, medium bodied, nice bright acidity. So that's lovely. I have Kim Crawford doing an unoaked Chardonnay from New Zealand. Again, lovely, medium to full body, nice bright acidity on this wine. And then I have the Peninsula Ridge from Canada. This is the Inox Chardonnay. Inox refers to inoxidable, which is the French word for stainless steel. So they're referring to the stainless steel tanks mm -hmm. that this wine has been made and aged in. What about the prices? The Robert Scully is 15, Kim Crawford is 24, and the Inox Chardonnay is 17. Well, uh, I'm going to go with the Peninsula Ridge. Uh, I like unoaked Chardonnay, and it's a VQA wine, which is also a good sign. So thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Okay. You're going to love it. Now, I left the uh, lobster pot pie in the oven for 45 minutes until the pastry was golden brown. I see, and then I'll let it rest for about 10 minutes to cool down a little bit. Now we'll put our grilled corn on there to the side. And uh, let's go and join Bob and Carl in the dining room. Okay, we're going to have a white, I mean, this really calls for a white wine lobster. Yeah, absolutely, huh? yeah. And let's have a taste, Bob, and absolutely. see what this delicious this looking creation is. Well, tastes it's more than like. delicious looking, it yeah. smells absolutely. Mm. It is hot. Mm. 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 Oh. Oh. Lots of flavors. Oh, mm -hmm. Lots of flavors. Excellent. Um, I think we should let that uh, cool, cool down a little, <laughs> a little bit. It is hot. <laughs> I have to say that that is delicious. In the meantime, the pastry is. Yeah, Bob, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you, do you ever um, get asked to represent people on the mainland? Or is your... No, no, I've, uh, I've done a jury trial in Yellowknife. I've done a trial in Saskatchewan. I've done one in Quebec. <laughs> in, oh. which was French, and I don't speak French, which was a bit difficult, <laughs> and I did one in, uh, one in Nova Scotia. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and now that's a different legal system in Quebec as well, right? It's similar, but the criminal law is uh, standard... Across the country? Across the country, in, okay. in reality. So yeah. I was able to do it with the aid of an interpreter there. Uh, oh. It was a rough ride. I don't think I'd do it again. No, uh, no. But no. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting... Yeah, well, I bet it was, yeah. yeah. Now, you're a, a Queen's Counsel. What I does am. that mean? Because we see that after, you know, some people well, say, well, Robert say, Simmons is a QC or whatever. What, what does that I, mean? I can say something really sarcastic. It means that I <laughs> contributed enough to the right political party. But, uh, 
No, it, it, it's, it's an honor given to people uh, who have excelled in the legal profession, not just in the profession, but for their, their civilian thing, uh, activities as well as mm -hmm. volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, quite often you see the treasurer or the president of the law society get it when they finish their job. Oh, I see. Because that's, that, that's a very hard job to, to be part of that, and, it's, and it's, it's, there's no compensation to it. Yeah. So it, it's kind of an honor that's given, and you know, as much as I joke about it, I, I was very honored, very to, get it. Yeah. honored to get mm -hmm. it, very honored mm -hmm. to get it. My dad was alive at the time, so it was nice, and he was, yeah. he was very proud. Yeah. He was very proud. Yeah. Do you have any favorite uh, legal movies? I'm thinking of, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, Inherit the Wind, uh, Twelve Angry Men, all this kind of Twelve stuff. Twelve Angry Men is good, Justice for All. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Justice for All. Yeah. Is that Pacino? Uh, yep, Justice okay. for All, and... Uh, the shot where the the judge is on the roof eating, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> eating his lunch with the with the uh, with the gun. No, no. This is, and this is trust this right here. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was yeah. Speaking of guns, uh, just to get serious, for now, what do you think of all of this uh, debate in the United States over gun control? I watched uh, President Obama the other night after the vote had gone the wrong way, uh, and. Uh, I, he may well be a very talented actor and a very talented speaker, but I think he was truly, truly, truly dismayed and ashamed at what had happened, uh, you know, these past months and the issues in the U.S. Yes, it's, uh, it's a tough issue, uh, one that uh, we've had to grapple with in Canada, but uh, we certainly don't have the problems they have in the United States. No, we do not. Uh, you know, whether you agree with the uh, gun registry, long gun registry being done away with and that, I mean, obviously the police told us it was of great assistance. The government uh, was of a different mindset. Uh, as bad as our problem is, I don't think mm -hmm. it approaches anything as we've seen in the U.S. over the last yeah, year. That's right. Yeah. And very, very well, sad. Bob, it's been great having you on the show. It's been a tremendous Thank you so honor. Much. And here's to uh, your good health. Cheers. Uh, Cheers. And your continued success. Thank you. And, and here's uh, to we your will cooking. be back yep. with uh, Ruth Wigman of Bistro Sophia, who's going to make lamb lollipops. <laughs> You've seen the show and now there's a book. Cooking with One Chef, One Critic by Carl Wells with Steve Watson features 120 recipes, more than 200 photos, and plenty of behind-the-scenes stories from this long-running series. Cooking with One Chef, One Critic is available now. Well, Bistro Sophia on Water Street in St. John's is one of the most spectacular uh, success stories on the local restaurant scene. From the very beginning, it found its niche and it's been going great guns ever since. One of the other reasons, I think, for the success of this particular restaurant is that it likes to attract like-minded chefs. In other words, chefs who share the owner's passions for real European bistro cuisine, like our guest. Ruth Wigman, <laughs> and wel Hi, welcome to One Chef, One Critic, and Ruth is also the kitchen manager at Bistro Sophia. Yeah. So um, lots of responsibility, but uh, we're going to relax now and uh, do something fun, aren't awesome. we? Awesome, yeah. What no. are you going to prepare for us? Uh, we're going to do a little lamb lollipop oh, with a, a fresh salad and just some uh, a light vinaigrette, kind of spring, kind of inspired, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's really easy and simple to do at home. Okay. Perfect. So let's get started. Okay. So first, what I'm going to do is you get the pan heated, uh, and we're going to put a little bit of oil in there. Okay. Just, and we're going to wait a sec just until it gets a bit hot. Okay. Um, the last thing you want to do is put your meat in there and no sear. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so you, you want it to be medium high, yeah. I guess? Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you see a bit of smoke, you know. It's good. It's good. Turn it down a little bit, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to season our lamb chops with a little salt and pepper. I see you marinated that with what, yeah, a little bit of time? Yeah, a little bit of time, uh, oil, uh, some peppercorns, and a bit of garlic in there, mm, too. Perfect. Just let it sit in there for a little while, even overnight, if you'd like. And okay. there we go. So a little salt and pepper, and I'm going to put these straight in there. There you go. Well, that's going to sear. Yeah. 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 We'll put three of those on there. Perfect. All right, so while that's going, I also like to add a little bit of thyme into the pan. Just to... Add that flavor. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of butter in there, too, because... You can't go wrong with a little well, bit of butter. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> butter makes everything juicy and nice, yeah. so... Let's let that go a little bit there. Perfect. And in the meantime, should we make the vinaigrette? Perfect. Yeah, right ahead. Get there that pole there, thank you. All right, so what I have is very simple. Uh, fresh ingredients. You can substitute different things, whatever you like, mm -hmm. sort of thing. But uh, the idea that I do is I've got uh, some lemon juice and lemon zest for really mm -hmm. nice flavor. It's about one lemon there. Uh, some roasted garlic, and that's mm -hmm. one full head of roasted garlic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little look to see two of these 
We'll give them a little flip. They got a nice little, so that was what? One minute or one so? One minute, yeah. yeah. Not very long at all. It happens really quickly, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Put those over there. Perfect. Nice. All right, so we got the head of garlic that I roasted off and just squished it right out. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of parsley, fresh parsley that we chopped. Mm -hmm. Some asparagus, probably about three stalks of asparagus. You nice. can either grill it on your grill, or I just blanched these blanched a little them. bit or steamed, and just shock them after so the color stays nice and the yeah. nutrients and everything. Uh, here I have some pichelin olives. Uh, they're my favorites, uh, but you can substitute for Kalamata olives or you know uh, any other olive that you yeah. personally like. I also took the seeds out of these. Okay. Pich pichelin. Yes. Really, they're really nice. A little more milder, not yeah. so zingy. Robust, like cal yeah. the calmado is pretty zingy, okay. so a little bit mild. Uh, some freshly diced, vine ripened tomatoes. You can use normal tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes. I yep, actually yep. saw the heirloom in the grocery seeded, store. Seeded, and, seeded and diced up. Yeah. You didn't peel them, did you? No, okay. no, no. I just uh, quartered them and took the um, right. the flesh yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, then I have a shallot here. One shallot. Yep. Just dice that up a little bit. What I'm going to do too is I'm going to take these lamb chops. Oh. Okay. We go. Ready. And we're just going to let them rest for a couple yeah. of minutes. Just look yeah. Just That looks very nice. Yep. Thank you so much. There we go. Just leave that to the side. Yep. All right. Voila. So we got all that. And then I also have a little bit of mint that I chiffonaded. So I just rolled it up and uh, sliced yep. it really fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't like mint, you don't have to add it, but it adds a nice. It goes well with the lamb. Nice fresh taste yep. too, Absolutely. right? So I'm going to add my salt and pepper now so it can dissolve in the lemon juice and everything mm. before I add my oil, so you don't get chunks. Yeah, yeah. Coat just add a little bit of oil. Yeah, a little bit of oil, just enough so you can coat your greens and whatnot. Delicious, pretty well, yeah. 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 <laughs> it smells really nice too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty delicious. We're gonna have to move along now because yeah. we're uh, running a little right, short. so here we go. Um, what I can do here is I'll add a little bit of this to the greens. There that we looks go. great. And I'll toss it with salt and pepper really quick, just a little extra for the greens. Oops. Mix that around. And now at this point, you can add cheese if you want. Little, I brought a little yep. Parmesan with us to add. Yep. Oops, the daisies. It's okay. Okay. That on there. I'll put the little hand lollipops on there as well. Just dump that. And put that on there. I'll place that over there, sorry. And we'll put the lamb lollipops on. And we're done. And we're done. Perfect. That looks so beautiful. More vinaigrette on top for you. So you Thank you very try. much, Ruth. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, there you go. we're going to taste this down in a sec, but right, before perfect. then we're going to say that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to have one of these lollipops. And lollipops are meant to be yeah. <laughs> done with a hand, right? Yeah. Nicely rested. <laughs> That vinaigrette on it. Good. Another keeper count. <laughs> oh. Lamb is my yeah, favorite. I was afraid to taste that because I said that's still really hot. <laughs> Henry, you brought a wine that has a bit of a hint of eucalyptus. I did, yeah. It, it was interesting to me. I always wondered if it was a characteristic of the grape or what was bringing that quality. And my recent trip to Chile helped me understand that this wine happens to be an Argentinian Malbec. But the same thing goes, what I noticed when I visited the wineries is that there were eucalyptus trees all around. And the interesting thing about wine is things that grow around actually do seem to find their way into the flavor and nose right. of the wine. Okay, that's very interesting. A bit of uh, terroir uh, influence. Crept right in there. Steve, look, I just got an ex ex extra... <laughs> extra special thing. 